Hey guys, so I just wanted to come and um, shoot this video today. I just really talk about, you know, give you some perspective of what it's like to actually run a six-figure business. So, it's funny, you know, when, when I was first getting started, um, this is even before I started my accounting firm in 2014. This is like back in like 2011, 2012. I was like, you know, coming into entrepreneurship and I was thinking like, you know, I, that, that was around the time when people were talking about like Facebook and Instagram, how all these like tech companies, they would start up, they would get like these billions of dollars in funding without really having any kind of revenue, any kind of track record. And it would almost be like, you know, all you need to have a business is just an idea, right? You need to have this magical idea that no one has ever thought about or no one has tried. And as long as you have that, you're going to be able to make a lot of money. And, you know, that, that was kind of what we were thinking back then. A lot of people still have that viewpoint. But it's kind of like the, the more that I'm in business, the more I understand that it's less about the idea and it's 100% about the execution, okay? There have been so many people that have had brilliant ideas, right? But they just don't really have the the footwork or the, the motion or the skill sets to be able to really hit it and make it work, right? Because number one, you need to have really good skill sets. And when I say skill sets, I don't mean your your ability to do the accounting or bookkeeping work. That is something that you can improve on over time, but to get started, you don't have to be an extreme expert or master with 50,000 years inside the industry. Oftentimes what happens, a lot of people, they get so like focused on like they don't know enough about accounting, or they don't know enough about bookkeeping or virtual CFO, and they're focused millions and millions and millions of hours on getting certified and getting everything. And, and oftentimes it comes from people feeling like, you know, they're not good enough to do the job. But really, the, f the hard thing to kind of, the hard pill to swallow is, you're gonna always run into someone who is less skilled than what you are, who makes 10 to 20 to 500 times more money than what you make. And the reason why is because it's not really just about the skill sets. I'll even kind of put an analogy. So oftentimes you, you'll see like like a lot of um, people want to be like singers or rappers or dancers or musicians, right? And they think that just having the best product, so the best rap music, the best album, is the thing that's going to make them get famous. Versus whenever you hear someone who's like a really, really high level um, artist, for example, like a Rick Ross or, um, um, who are some good ones? Um, Rick Ross is just the easiest one to kind of talk about nowadays because he wrote this documentary book. Um, and he was saying when he was coming up, he had these like great like skill sets. Like he would just be like having like these um, really fast lyrics. It would be like masterful, but no one really cared. And it wasn't until he actually made it more simple and made it for more of like a general mass market audience and really focused on marketing and building his fan base that he was able to actually start you know making waves and start getting successful. <clears throat> Listen to that story. It wasn't. The craft, the craft itself did not was not the thing that made him the billions of dollars. It was learning the marketing and the sales first that allowed him to be able to do that. See, most people are so focused on their craft and they're like the artist. They're trying to make it perfect, trying to get as great as possible, as perfect as possible. But they never go and get to the market. They never go and tell people about their business. They never go and try and ask people to, you know, give them money. And, and when you're starting out, oftentimes it's because, you know, maybe you're, you're we're, we're fearful about getting rejected or we're fearful about, you know, like telling people about the business and, you know, what happens if it doesn't work out Then everyone knows that I failed. And I mean, I've been there before, right? I failed my business um, and for my accounting firm. I failed it. Um, for six months straight and that was my second business because my first business was e-commerce and that failed too so it's just like you know the only difference between me and most people who are starting out is you know i i'll you know have something bad happen or my business will fail and then i'm just like i don't care let's try it again let's try something else let's try something else let's keep moving until we make it work let's keep moving let's keep moving let's keep moving let's keep moving and that's really the thing because it's funny a lot of people think that when you're starting a business you're not going to fail and really what, what I always tell people inside of my private mentorship program is I, I always talk about like, um, it's not that you should try and avoid failure. Your job is to go and fail a thousand times more than the average person. That's actually the trick. Most people who are getting started and who are not making any money, they're trying to avoid failure. People who are making a lot of money, they're hitting failure tens of thousands of times more than you. So think about it. So think about like the average insurance company. How do a lot of them make their money? They, they used to make a lot of their money by cold calling, right? And 
most people are afraid of cold calling. I'm not saying that you need a cold call if you're, if you're trying to grow an accounting business. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying to prove a point. They have whole departments of people who do about 100 to 200 cold calls every single day. Now, they're not getting 200 clients per day. That means that they're looking for anywhere between about 1% to about 7% of the people that they actually you know, call on the phone. Probably about, probably about 20% are going to answer the phone, if that. So 20% out of 200 are going to answer the phone, right? Then of that percentage, you probably only get one or seven, probably not even one. It's probably going to take you about 1% to 7% of the people who answer the phone are actually going to sign up for your insurance policy, right? But that means that they are facing so much rejection, rejection, rejection. And the only difference between them and, you know, you and maybe these billion dollar insurance companies is that these billion dollar insurance companies have floors of people whose sole job is to be rejected on a daily basis. And they're getting hundreds of thousands of rejections per month, if not millions of rejections per year. And that's really the difference between someone who is like, you know, starting out. They get zero rejections, no one's talking to them. People are successful. You get hundreds of thousands of rejections. For me, I was I was telling um, uh, my business partner, I was like, you know, with the accounting firm and with the coaching business, my goal this year is to get about 2,000 rejections on the phone. Um, and the reason why, right, is because the more rejections you get, the more sales you get. And it's, it's kind of funny. A lot of people are like, you know, I want to avoid all rejection at all costs. Now, 2,000 rejections, that is a lot. That just means like on a sales consultation, like someone said no or, or they just don't. There just wasn't a good time. And the reason why is because like, you know, my, my close rate's really high. So the more people that we like do and we kind of bring in is, is just really a cool number, right? All that to say is the more times you get rejected, the more money you're going to make, the less time you have to spend on marketing and just makes it so much easier for you to grow your business. All that to say is like, you can't be afraid to go. The idea of starting your business is cool and you know, it, it sounds trendy and, it, and it's fun, but actually doing the business, that's where, you know, success is actually found. And, you know, most people know that, but some people, I think it's really helpful to be reminded just to know that, like, this stuff doesn't just happen. It doesn't just happen. You make it happen. You have to make it happen by repetition, by punching the market, by talking to people, by, you know, even if you have a marketing machine that is, like, I give my students in my mentorship program a marketing machine, but that marketing machine is getting rejected. You're not getting rejected, but that machine's getting rejected on a pretty high frequency basis. And it allows you to be able to pick out the people who are actually interested in talking and working with you. And then from there, all you have to do is just get good at the sales consultation and you close the clients at a pretty consistent percentage. My students close on average between 50 to 80% of the people they speak to on their first consultation at their target price point. Um, and that's just kind of the stats that, that we're tracking. So it's just one of those, one of those things, man, where you guys just get a lot better over time and you kill it and that's that's really it that's how my students get to 20 grand a month um this year what i'm really planning on is i'm trying to make sure the average student inside the program gets to about twenty thousand dollars per month in sales um generally the old average was about ten thousand to about twelve thousand dollars per month but i really want to kind of raise that standard of the program make sure that people who get inside of there um that we just have like the tools and trainings to be able to just get them to that twenty thousand dollars a month mark and then who knows pretty soon like you might be able to get the average person doing like three hundred four hundred thousand a month who knows um, but that's kind of what we're shooting for. I always want to see how far we can take it, how much we can get the students to succeed. And, you know, that that's kind of my, my sole focus right now, right? So I run the accounting firm and then I have the marketing um, slash coaching business where it's like inside of that coaching business, all we're trying to do is how can we get better student results? Because it's funny, right? The better my students do, the more I can just come to you guys and like talk to it. Like, I mean, like John, he's on track for $759,000 this year. Or Lori, she's able to quit her job after about 61 days, she's at like $8,000 a month. She's going to be at about $14,000 per month, um, probably in the next like two to three months. And it's just like, this stuff happens really fast. Just You just need to know what to do. You need to know exactly what to expect. So if you want some help growing your business and you know, you're know you tired of really banging your head against the wall and trying to figure this stuff out on your own, um, I recommend you go ahead and click on the link inside the description below. Um, it's going to have like a link to my calendar so you can choose a time to speak to me um, at a time that fits your earliest convenience. Now also what it has is like a form for you to fill out some questions just so that when we get on the phone I'll know exactly where you are right now and we'll be able to jump into the strategy to make sure that I can help you out. Because again, I don't take on a huge amount of people. Um, I do. I am very selective with this program because, again, I am running my accounting firm, so I do need to make sure that um, you know the people that we do bring on have the highest percentage of success, so that I don't have to deal with like people who are complaining or disgruntled. 
because um, you know I've, I've worked too hard to build a reputation in the industry to have a lot of disgruntled people inside of my program so you know we have to make sure it's a good fit because if you're not gonna if I don't think you can actually go and make you know ten thousand twenty thousand dollars a month um, unfortunately I just I you know Unfortunately, unless your goal is to make like five grand or two grand a month, I generally don't accept people into the program unless I believe that you guys have the potential to do what I tell you and to make money from it. So if that's you, I'll see you inside on the call. Um, if you're not quite ready yet, you know, that's okay too. Um, come back when you are ready. Let's get this thing moving. Um, until I see you next time, either on the call or in the next video, have a great rest of your day. Take it easy.